Okay guys, this part makes me nervous. Um, but now that we've written the ECC, we need to turn the console on. Now, um, I'm not putting it back together yet, so I'm going to turn it on while it's still sitting on top of the motherboard box. Um, motherboard boxes can be used as test benches for computer motherboards, so there shouldn't be an issue with, with it sitting on top of this. But if you're just sitting on top of a desk or anything, yeah, you never know, there could be bits of solder still lying uh, on your desk. Unless you clear it out, uh, you might want to put it back in the metal, the metal base for the motherboard to sit in. Um, but yeah, we have everything connected. The RF board's back on there, we've got the fans attached. Uh, we've got the cool runner set to normal mode, make sure it's set to normal mode. Other things, obviously, we've now got our connection to the uh, TV so that we can see Zell. I've also got my Ethernet cable plugged in because I'm going to try and get uh, the CPU key off Zell through the network connection so I don't have to manually type it into um, JRunner. So that's one thing you can do is hook up an Ethernet cable to your PC. Um, but if that doesn't work, uh, then you can just take a picture or just type it in, type the CPU key into J, uh, J Runner. Another thing I completely forgot to mention is that the middle switch needs to be set to fat. Um, yeah, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. But uh, there's fat and slim. Obviously, if you're doing a fat or a slim, we're doing a fat, so make sure that the, the switch right here is set to fat. So towards these things, it should be towards them on the right, set to fat. So before we turn it on, bear in mind the timing file that's on it may not be the best. So, you know, it may take a long time to glitch. We can work on that by uh, trying different timing files and doing other things like bridging cap on the cool runner to see if that makes a difference changing the jump, the bridge points from 3, 2 and 1. Uh, you can do all those different things to try and speed up the glitch time if it's slow. Um, so we'll just see where we get to with this. It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as it actually boots up at some point is what we're after. Wow! Oh, I am impressed. That is incredible. I've never seen it boot that fast. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. We're in Zell. Okay, so now that we're in Zell, a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to get our CPU key. So if I zoom, see if you can see this. I know it's bright. My CPU key is there, your CPU key. You can type that in to JRunner. So you can go ahead and just type that into JRunner, or if you look network config, because I connected my ethernet cable, we've got an IP address, 192.168.137.143. If I type that into uh, JRunner, so I've got JRunner here. I'm sorry about the lighting. There you go. Uh, so, on here we've got the IP, so 192.168, it was 137. One three seven point point one four three, and by entering that, we can click get CPU key, and uh, oh, there we go! It got it. Don't know if you guys can see that, but. CPU key, it got the CPU key from the internet. You can see uh, if we go up, success, JTAG selected, getting info from the network address, and then CPU key is correct, added to database, done. So that's it, we've got our CPU key off Zell. Now like I say, if you do not have an ethernet cable connected, and even if you do have it connected and it's not working, you can't get it off, the CPU key is right there. You just have to grit your teeth and type it in manually into JRunner. 
and don't worry if you make a mistake because it will say it will not say CPU key is correct until you've entered it incorrectly. Um, so you've entered it in correctly, not incorrectly. So type that CPU key in if you can't get it from the network and we're ready to move on to the point where uh, we can actually create our freeboot image and get this working into a proper reset glitch hack console. Well guys, I can't believe it how fast that booted on Zell. I guess we'll see how fast it boots uh, when we get, uh, what's it called, the freeboot NAND done. So anyway, we've got our CPU key, like I said before, just type it in if you can't get it from the network. But if you can get it from the network, it's much easier because it will just paste it in there for you and it will check to make sure it will say NAND initialization finished. And it should say something like NANDs are the same. Uh, no, it'll say CPU key is correct. Uh, so uh, one thing it does do normally, has it done it this? Oh, it hasn't. Okay, they've stopped doing that. Thank God. JRunner used to uh, put put everything, put, re put your NAND dumps into a folder called temp um, in your app data when you uh, when you put your CPU key in, which was terrible because the temp folder folders files and folders in the temp folder get removed all the time by the computer so um, you can lose your NAND dumps that way which is why I made a backup of them uh, but it doesn't do that anymore so thank God for that okay so we are almost done actually all we have to do is select uh, glitch 2 make sure you select glitch 2 even though we're doing we're setting up like I say on the hardware side of things we're setting up for RGH1 um, in terms of like the jumpers on the cool runner and all that stuff we set up for RGH1 but when it comes to um, the NANs we set that as RGH2 so set set it as glitch 2 set the latest dash kernel which from when I'm making this video is 17349 and we're pretty much ready to go ahead and create the exe build image so we're gonna click create exe build image of our um, NAND. I'm just gonna check a couple of things. We got XE build settings. So DVD eject to Zell button. Good. That's all fine. So all we're gonna do is create XE build image. And that seemed to go absolutely fine. No issues there. Now we've got our CPU key. Yep everything's fine there so it's just a case of flashing it to the NAND now it'll automatically load that into the source so your UPD flash will automatically be loaded into the source and all we have to do is write NAND so hook up the power cable to the console go ahead and hook up your NANDX or JR programmer wires back up to the JR programmer or NANDX plug in your USB cable back up to the computer so it's all connected and ready to write the NAND and that's it, so we'll write NAND. And it's now writing our UPD flash.bin to the console. Remember if we get that bad block again that I had before, um, remember I had one AA was a bad block. Um, that's a problem with the NAND chip itself. It may not appear when we're writing the NAND, but every time we read the NAND, we'll definitely get like bad block at one AA. I'm not sure if it will say the same thing when we're writing, but I guess we'll find out. So I'll pause the video and I'll resume once it's near finished writing the NAND. Alright guys, so as you can see it has written the NAND. I had no bad block errors, but of course when I read the NAND I might get a bad block error if I went to read it again. But um, they were remapped anyway, so it's fine. Uh, so yeah, we are done essentially. I'm going to power on the console we'll see how fast it boots we'll see if it work if it's working if it boots into the dash and there's no e66 error or something like that you never know with these things so it should be fine though um, so we'll boot into the dash and we are going to um, see if xex menu is now not corrupted after we've done all of this okay guys so this is a big moment um, yeah here we go so I've got my hard drive hooked up now as well and we're going to power this on and see if we boot into the dash and if it's an RGH now. <laughs> so I've powered it on, switched to HDMI 2. Okay. 
There we go, boot. That was like a second glitch attempt. That's not bad at all. Almost an instant boot. I'm happy with that though, to be honest. I mean, I'm used to an RGH2, which takes about like, sometimes it can take anything from like two, three minutes to boot up. Okay, so I've got my controller synced up. We're gonna head over, I'm doing this with one hand, so. System, storage, hard drive, demos. XEX menu 1.2 game demo, same size. Remember, it was corrupted when we started. It's now not corrupted. And we should be able to run it from my games. XEX menu 1.2. And we don't have a profile, so we'll ignore that. There we go, guys. XTX menu 1.2. Working fine. We have successfully reset glitched hack, hacked this console with RGH 1.2. So that is pretty incredible. What I'm gonna do now that I, I know it's working is I'm gonna clean up some of the points with some rubbing alcohol, and then I'm gonna glue down some of the wires at the back so that they don't shift about or tug on the points. And then I can put this back into the metal cage and put it all back together and we'll have a reset glitched hack console on one point on RGH 1.2 also unsolder this uh, direct wire installs for reading and writing the NAND and that will be it it's a success it has worked um, so first of all can I just make a huge shout out to Monoxide um, he was I was emailing him for advice about doing this because I hadn't done it before he gave me some great advice. Initially I was going to do an RGH2 and he told me that you know there was this 1.2 method that was much better in, on fat consoles and glitches them instantly almost, which it pretty much does. And um, yeah, he gave me some great advice on the alternative CLK point and just helped me out a hell of a lot on this video. He is a great hardware modder. He does reset glitch hat consoles and sell them in the UK so if you're in the UK if you look at this and you think this is far too complicated to do yourself then you can buy an RGH from him I'll link his Facebook shop in the description um, he's also got a retail shop so if you want to do this yourself uh, but you want, want to buy a specific motherboard like a Jasper then he also sells retail consoles and he will sell you whatever motherboard you want so if you ask for a Jasper he will give you a Jasper retail console for you to RGH. I actually bought this one off him myself because I wanted to make sure I was doing a Jasper 16 megabyte because well I didn't really know if it was going to be a 16 megabyte but I wanted a Jasper console because they're the best motherboards out of the fat consoles so I got one off him. So definitely go check him out links in the description um, but yeah we have successfully reset glitched hacked an Xbox 360 so Thank you guys for watching, go ahead, show some support on the video, leave a like if you liked the, liked the video or found the information useful, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and I will see you guys next time. Yeah.